Hi, I'm Matti Mali, aka Hydrasic Actor, and I'm doing a video after a very, very long while. I'm sorry, I think I lost my video making mojo at some point, but I'll try to make at least two more regular reviews before this year ends and finish this series about my top 100 worst movies I've ever seen. Okay, so, uh, yeah, just a reminder that these are based on the numbers I gave them at Internet Movie Database, and we are finishing the ones that I gave 2 out of 10. So, at um, number 20, we have Hercules in New York. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger's film debut from 1969. Wow, that guy's made so many movies. Well, I think I saw this like more than 10 years ago, and I think I saw the version where uh, Schwarzenegger's voice is dubbed. Um, he plays the title character Her Hercules. The Greek, myth Greek mythological uh, son of God, Jews, was sent to Earth because he's a um, rebel or something, and uh, there's this he and Hades, Jews' brother and the god of death, is trying to... What he was trying to do? I don't know, kill him? At least in the Disney movie. Yeah, I don't remember much about the plot progression, except that um, it was dumb. Uh, then there's this uh, annoying soundtrack that plays throughout the whole movie. This something now to that effect, and the uh, fighting choreography especially is uh, laughably bad. Uh, people are just kind of uh, waving around, and... Uh, Hercules kicks their ass with ease, and... He, I remember he kind of uh, made a fight for no reason. Uh, one saving grace this movie had, at, at least at the time I thought, there was this... Uh, the Hercules is most time occupied Accompanied by this um, bread seller, seller uh, played by horse Arnold Strang, I guess. Yeah, I actually like that character. He seemed like a sympathetic guy who is down with luck, and um, sometimes he made funny remarks. Well, at least compared to the most of the movies. Uh, Dead or an arrival humor. Yeah, I like the pretzel guy. It was kind of um woke up the sympathies and such. <clears throat> On the next one we have Us. Uh, Us is a Finnish movie from 1961. It was it's the second worst Finnish movie I've seen and. Uh, as I'm planning to review it at some point, maybe even next year, maybe, then uh, I'm not going to tell much about it, although I'm going to tell Pizma that it's based on a play, and it's um, about social consciousness and social commentary, and uh, the at the time there was this uh, program from the government to give uh, kind of an uh, assisting money to works of art where that uh, are that uh, speak socially are about social commentary and uh, and that way this move was made that the whole sole reason of it existing was for it to win award, an award uh, if the sum of money to help the producing company out of its financial problems, so uh, it's kind of um, forced in its message. But uh, in one day I'll talk about it in more detail. <clears throat> Number 18, Blood Rain. Yay! Who have ball-directed video game-based movie? 
Uh, this time about the uh, vampire lady who is in the Middle Ages and fights for good. I mean, uh, she's a hell vampire. The other part is human. Or, yeah. Um, a while ago I. Uh, th this movie sequel was uh, on this list earlier and. Uh, yeah, at least that movie had some very original ideas, but uh, yeah, there's a. First of all, it's uh, quite clumsily acted, especially the. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Especially the main character is played by Christina Logan, you know, from Terminator Rise 3 Rise of the Machines fame, where she played that. Uh, the. Uh, the that Terminator lady. Yeah, she's kind of an energy less like major to guess. And this movie has shown uh, big names like Michael Madsen, Ben Kingsley, who plays the main villain, this vampire lord who I guess killed the uh, Blood Brain's mother. <coughs> and Michelle Rodriguez, Billy Zane, Udo Kier, Meatloaf. Mm. And they kind of. Um, yeah, the Michelle uh, Rodriguez, Billy Zane subplot uh, is completely pointless and leads to nowhere. And, um. Well. Ben Kingsley is. Queen Kings is quite, um, well, he's uh, kind of uh, this uh, effort, this kind of um, bored and ex excited at the same time, kind of uh, the same chassis that in most of the bad movies he's starring in, and yeah, he didn't uh, take this role for um, Major reasons I read in an interview once where he said that. <coughs> but the plot is messy, it has too many. Oh, sorry, I'm tired. Uh, too many varying roads, and uh, it's illogical, and. Uh, yeah, I guess you should watch the Nostalgia Critic review to get a better image of. Oh, it's bad, Mrs. Uh, oh, 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 there was this. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> there was this one scene where, the, towards the end, this is a really cool scene where uh, Blood Rain is uh, sitting on this throne and uh, looks all badass. I like that shot. That, 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 that was good, but uh, otherwise, this movie is damn unpredictable. Uh, and next one, uh, Dancers and Dragons. Mm, yeah, this uh, hilariously bad adaptation of the famous role-playing game, said, uh, which is which is a very rich mythology. And this is the best thing out of it. Um, so the, there are these two thieves played by Justin Whalen and extremely annoying Marlon Wayans. I mean, uh, this uh, character he plays makes George or Beast look uh, tolerable in comparison. <coughs> I'm so annoying! <laughs> it's, tough. it's kind of a. Tries way too hard to be funny. Uh. There's this. And the bad wizard played by Jeremy Irons, who, like Ben Gisley in the previous movie I mentioned on this list, doesn't give a damn about what he looks like in the camera. Why some people go to the movies like this? Uh, well, I guess that maybe if you find the character to be entertaining to play, then I can Yes, uh, I mean, if I'm ever asked to be in a movie that I know is going to be bad, I'll check out that at least the character I play is uh, either funny or interesting or something of that effect. And there's Tora Birds playing the, um, some young queen, and uh, she doesn't give a damn either, but unlike with Jeremy Irons, whose uh, performance is uh, over the top, 
Her performance is just so bland. Yeah, Bruce Bruce Payne as this uh, blue lipstick bad guy. The Jeremy Iron Wizard's second in command. <laughs> blue lips. Uh. And, and the bad wizard tries to take control of some stuff that he can use to control dragons and take over the world or some such thing. The plot is of course cliche written, and which is not helped by it. All the characters in this movie are either bland or annoying, and there's not even much anything that can be recognized as Dungeons and Dragons. Well, there are Beholder, one Beholder, and Beholders are these uh, weird uh, floating balls with uh, lots of eyes, and uh, you will get something cool out of that, but um, uh, it's just a uh, mindless pet or something. God. Easily can be distracted by stars. And yeah, I should also mention about the special effects, which are also quite bad. Um, I don't remember where they good even at the time of this movie's made. I mean, technology has marched forward, and um, uh, in some old films you can excuse bad CGI because the technology hadn't reached its potential at that point yet, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, especially the, uh, especially the magic making was so um, uh, throwing dust. And uh, yeah, then, then there was this weird ending. Uh, what was that about? Uh, I'm not going to spoil. In case you are morbidly curious or want to watch some of some review of some people that already reviewed it, like No Social Critic or Decker Shadow, but. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just me no sense. Hmm. Well, I, well, I guess the one good uh, thing I can mention about this movie, at least it know which characters to kill. Let's just say that. Uh, next one, yeah, once again, a game-based double drag. Hmm, double drag. Yeah, that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> Based, based on a fighting game where our two brothers are trying to save a girl, I don't remember which girlfriend she was, and apparently in the sequel she died at like at the middle point. So it turns into a revenge story instead. There are at least two or three more sequels. And, uh, well, the movie is the. Movie is a kind of yeah. It tries to go to the kind of 1990s silliness, uh, kind of a saw in Super Mario Brothers and Street Fighter. They're, both of those movies are yeah, they are bad, but they're also funny kind of bad. Kill the blessers, if you will. Um, but this one, uh, yeah. Why this one fails so much more than those two others? Uh, I guess it's <clears throat> because the fighting is more fighting slaver. Yeah, it's uh, it's set in the apocalyptic uh, Los Angeles of 2007. <laughs> yeah, some people are not good at predicting futures. And these guys are chasing for some mysterious medallion that is held by their acquaintance girl. <laughs> yeah, the brothers are played by Mark Dacascus and Scott Wolf, and there's a Robert Patrick from the Terminator 2 fame as this uh, uh, evil businessman who is trying to take over the world or something. And uh, Alyssa Milano is there without any reason. I don't think her character affects the plot in any way. Well, the reason was the plot that is there. 
Yeah, like, yeah, I guess the main reason uh, for this movie's failure in my eyes is that it's right. It goes uh, way too overboard with its silly, sillier elements. Uh, at least in uh, Super Mario Bros. and Street Fighter, they try to take something seriously, you know. It had the. Uh, well, the serious stuff was corny, but at least it was. Uh, Something more merit than. Yeah, there was this one annoying character, this gang leader who at one point stirred some hulking beast for the main bad guy and loses like a couple of hundred IQ points and just bubbles around. Mm. And the uh, curious thing is, is that one of these movies writer is Paul Dini of all. People, yeah, the guy who wrote Batman the Animated Series and, and does much stuff for this DC Universe, both in comics and in television, but I was one of the, like, seven or eight writers of this thing. Just a, it, yeah, kind of a curious thing, really. I felt that I just needed to mention that. Yeah, I realize uh, my explanation about these movies uh, can be go to the tank and stuff of the time because I've seen this so many years ago. I don't remember much about them. Uh, I don't actively seek out for terrible movies. Uh, mm. Let's just go to the next one before this cassette ends. Uh, Jaws 3D. Yeah, as I mentioned in the previous video, previous listing of this, uh, I may be the only person who thinks that uh, Just 3D is a worse movie than Just Revenge. Because at least Just Revenge, Just Revenge had Michael Caine. Um, he is um, always an entertaining actor, even in his bad movies. Yeah, this one has Dennis Quaid, Wes Armstrong, McCorkindale, uh, Louis Gossett Jr. It's just really boring most of the time. Just like the, its sequel, Just Revenge, but uh, what makes Just Really Revenge worse is those absolutely terrible special effects. Yeah, it uh, tries to right on the 80s, 3D grays. Yeah, I... 3D fan. Yeah, I think the current 3D grays is... Uh, maybe it's going to turn the fad and uh, it's not going to be implemented uh, in uh, the future, but at least it's better made. It doesn't... Uh, always work, but uh, at least it's better made than uh, whatever the hell this was. Especially bad is the climax where the shark explodes. Oh, I guess that's not a spoiler. Of course those sharks are going to die at the end of those movies. But... Mm, yeah, it doesn't just wet my interest. Okay. I guess I can do one more before this disc ends. Number 14, Iga. And uh, this is one of those movies that I watched this summer just to get more variety of this list. And uh, I almost didn't watch it to the end. I watched like a half, 45 minutes, and uh, then I just thought that I can't make this. These characters are so freaking unlikable. That's just. Every character in this is a terrible human being. They are annoying, they yell at each other constantly, and belittle their achievements, and... Uh... Yeah, this is uh, a 60s movie about uh, this uh, ancient caveman played by Richard Keel, the only good thing in this movie. I mean, he's the only good actor in this movie. Yeah. What also makes this uh, film really annoying are those... Uh, this is a terrible sound editing. Uh, the sound is constantly crackling and... Uh, it's... Uh, I can't get a clear image out of it, but at least Richard Kiel is... Um, 
making his everything to salvage this uh, piece of trash. And as I mentioned, uh, there is this uh, guy, prayed by the dark son, and uh, there's this uh, gal who's a lovely uh, The guy, uh, I think, is uh, plays in a band, and the girl is his trophy girlfriend. What was his? Oh, uh, yeah, he was the professor's daughter, and professor was disappeared, and he was captured by this by the title or Iga in his escape, and of course the daughter gets captured as well when he, she tries to search for her father. And, uh, yeah, and it's kind of a really mean spirit that. Uh, let's go to the next one after I change the disc. The next one is the worst movie I gave 2 out of 10 Catwoman. Yeah, it's kind of hard to believe that you can make uh, Catwoman seem unsexy, but yeah, he was just played by Helen Berry, uh, one of the who was a very great body figure, but uh, I think they uh, made Catwoman's uh, costume too uh, unpractical and Slutish, if you know what I mean. Well, I showed you the poster just right there, so I guess you will. It's amazing. Well, yeah, it's about this lady who works in cosmetics, and she gets to know that her boss, played by Sarah Stone, yeah, I said it right, that she's planning some new kind of cosmetic product that's. Uh, turns one skin into marble. And a very big uh, bad um, side effect of it is that it makes your skin look kind of like cracked and uglier. I'm not sure if that uh, brute killed its uh, user. Well, I doubt because she herself used that to make her skin look like Mar mar marble. Yeah, this is kind of a weak premise. Well, uh, see, uh, well, the main character played by Halle Berry and Selena Kyle Mitchell uh, gets um, waste dumped on her, which um, then she loses her, almost dies, and it's a uh, Brought back to, by, back to life by cats who lick her, and she becomes Catwoman and gains cat-like agi cat -like agility. Yeah, that happened. I guess those cats had the mystical powers or something. Uh, that's uh, really unclear, and the mysticism stuff doesn't really come out. Uh, and then there's this, uh, was it a cop or a... Fire Rescuer, played by Benjamin Brad. Uh, I don't remember what his role was, but uh, he's the boyfriend guy. Hmm, so... Yeah, weak premise, stupid plot, like in many of these kind of um, things. Yet, stupid plot is one of the most major things that come out, and of course, weak acting for everyone alike, everybody alike, with weak dialogue. Hmm. That's so an interesting viewer made a review of... Oh yeah, Nostalgia did review Catwoman here, yeah, okay. <sighs> yeah, so let's go to the... Movies that I gave 1 out of 10 that in that movie database. Yeah, 12 movies got that distinct dishonor. And yeah, I'm going to get so much hate about this, but uh, num the 12th worst movie I've ever seen is Caddyshack. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, you probably think I just got a uh, brain aneurysm and uh, and to be fair, I'm also kind of surprised that I ended up hating this 
as much as I did. Um, I've seen it like eight years ago, so my point of view is rather skewy. Um, well, um, well, those of you who don't know, Caddy Sack is this uh, comedy about a um, golf, golf club worker who works for this uh, rich millionaire played by I don't remember who. Well, the cat. I think it's. Dead Knight. Uh, the cast include uh, one of the great comedians of the title, like Chew Chase, Rodney Dangerfield, Dead Knight, Bill Murray. I think the main character is played by Michael Keith, but he's so bland and forgettable. And yeah, so one is wants to sell the golf club, I think, or buy it, or get lots of money. And there, there's this uh, Rodney Dangerfield replaced this uh, recently rich uh, guy who's become recently rich, and uh, he's a very poor mannered and uh, does all the funny stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the point is that uh, many. Uh, this is probably the biggest difference I've ever had to a public opinion because Caddyshack is regarded as a comedy classic and uh, many people like it uh, unlike its sequel Caddyshack 2 which is uh, apparently actually bad general public uh, regards it as a bad movie I've only seen some clips of it I've seen the cinema's not review but uh, Okay, well this movie didn't work for me. Well, I just didn't find it funny. I just thought that, uh, with the, as I mentioned earlier, the main characters planned. The jokes are... The jokes just felt kind of obvious and... Uh, well, I just want to get some context that uh, before watching it eight years ago, I, I, I had seen this movie before as a kid, and I remember this uh, explosive uh, final climax, and, uh, and uh, then it come from the TV, I just said, yeah, I would watch this again, just to see what it, what, what it was like, because I didn't remember it, and uh, it's a, it was so slow-paced, I mean... Uh, yeah, it was slow paced, and the characters were funny. Even the Roger Dangerfield guy who was supposed to be funny, I just felt he was annoying and uh, just so uh, good. Lots of talk with a funny voice because that's comedy, right? And uh, well, the plot was uh, very was very. Fragmented. Uh, yeah, the movie often just uh, went to these weird side routes. Uh, that uh, and the comedy itself, which is uh, mostly based on uh, slapstick. Yeah, I guess it was kind of this comedy style that just I, at that point of my life, had turned to dislike. Kind of an um, over the board. Well, not even over the board, because it was so. There was just so much blandness in it. It's just this uh, frustrating. Uh, a wave of blandness that um, reaped out from every corner. I haven't found the... Oh yeah, one of the big draws it was, of course, Bill Murray, who plays this uh, groundkeeper, who was trying to kill this uh, golfer, who is uh, more intelligent than an animal of that caliber suit. And he's trying to kill that. And it's done. Ah, excuse me, I just need to.
Oh, sorry, that's my cell phone. Yeah, anyway, the... Bill Murray character I didn't find funny either, because... Uh, he do this, that, it is all useless, the speaking kind of in a tired voice, and... Uh, trying to be... He was good in, good in, was in translation, but uh, I think he works better at drama, but uh, yeah, uh, my, yeah, yeah, my explanation is kind of messy because I don't remember much of it, and uh, I, uh, I was hoping that I could from somewhere get the movie and see it again, just to make sure that uh, did I judge it unfairly back then, but uh, before, and I guess I need to see Gaddis Act 2 in and try to get some perspective, but until that day happens, uh, Gaddis Act remains here. Twelve worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Which is a bizarre thing to say about something that has gotten uh, like 7.1 at the internet movie database. Mm. It just uh, didn't work for me. Its funniness wasn't coherent. Uh, there, it just uh, threw stuff at the wall and hoped that something, something would stick. And uh, yeah, something would stick, but it's kind of an. Uh, goes down very slowly because it was wet and uh, uh, then some going to come to clean the rest of the day something like yeah okay but I mean that uh, at least the Gaddisack was a well well made movie it had a effort unlike the last movie on today number eleven Problem Child Three Junior in Love. Oh uh, yeah, I've had problems out in this list before, didn't I? Yeah, it was very long, long, long time ago when I had problems child tool tear somewhere. And this uh, third movie is um, made for TV. And, uh, there are some old cast returning, like Gilbert Gottfried, who this time plays a different character, I think, and. Uh, Jack Warren, who plays the kid's uh, grandfather, but the uh, kid has changed to some guy, Justin Chapman, and I don't think he has done everything, anything else. And there's instead of John Ritter, we have now William Cath as his dad. Yeah, this is a uh, yeah, the problem is uh, as the name suggests, is about this uh, kid who is quite a rascal. He does lots of uh, pranks and is uh, generally just uh, mean and uh, wants attention. And this third movie, which has no point in existing, just wanted to turn it into a cartoon, this whole thing. I guess the second one, which was also quite bad with its uh, below the belt humor, was going towards that direction as well, but uh, Problems are 3 just fully embraces it. And, uh, it's very rampant about its about its suckiness. Uh, yeah, I guess I've spoken up already. I need to go now and lock all the doors at this canvas. It's my kind of job now. But uh, be sure to wait for the final video in this. Uh, Bad movie showcase, which contains the 10 worst uh, movies I've ever seen, and hopefully I'll be more... Uh, I'll not be a star as I am now, and hopefully my controversial opinion didn't uh, make you lose all respect for me. Okay, hopefully see, we'll see again before the year ends. Bye.